Call of Duty drops a free-to-play battle royale, Riot gets into tactical shooters, Planetside 2 comes out of the blue with a major update, and you better buy up all the toilet paper you can because Fantasy Star Online 2 is going open beta. What's good everyone, James Blonde here with your weekly recap for gaming news and announcements of the week of March 13th, 2020. Leading off this week is a major new release, especially if you're a fan of Call of Duty or enjoy battle royales for that matter, as Activision launched its free-to-play Call of Duty Warzone. Warzone is a battle royale style game featuring 150 player matches with two game modes, battle royale and plunder. As usual, Battle Royale features a last man standing mechanic, while the arena slowly shrinks as players are surrounded by deadly gas. Somebody farted, it gets gross. People end up dying, it's as simple as that. Get eliminated in this mode and you'll be thrown in the gulag for a chance to fight another player 1v1 for a chance to be redeployed. That's kinda cool, I don't know if that's unique to this or not, I don't really play many Battle Royales. Plunder is a mode that puts players in a race to loot, steal, and complete contracts to be the one who earns the most cash. Currently, the game features one zone, which has over 300 points of interest and multiple environment types. It also features five different vehicles to get around, including a helicopter. And all of this comes with synced progression with Call of Duty Modern Warfare, so if you have that game or get it in the future, you'll have all the content that you've earned in either game compiled together. It's pretty big, and according to Activision, 6 million players have checked out the game in its first 24 hours, so it might be the next big battle royale to follow. Riot also slipped a preview of its 5v5 tactical shooter Valorant last week, and it's already looking pretty smooth. The game's supposed to marry precision shooting with hypernatural powers, but there's much we still don't know. Kind of looks like a cross between Overwatch, TF2, and... CSGO? Kinda? You can check out the full gameplay preview at the link in the description below, and of course keep an eye out at mmhunts.com for future updates. Also out this week is Bless Unleashed, which launched on Xbox One on Thursday. Bless Unleashed is a free-to-play action MMORPG and features 4K and HD support for those who really enjoy the eye candy, and it does look pretty good. At launch, there are 13 zones to explore, 7 field bosses to challenge, plus 6 dungeons, 8 layers, and 8 arena challenges. There's been a lot of changes based on feedback during the beta testing, so if you've got an Xbox One, if you're one of those few people, and you're looking for something new to try, why not give it a shot? Meanwhile, Fantasy Star Online 2 is finally gearing up for its open beta in the West, announcing that it will begin on Tuesday, March 17th at 5pm Pacific. It will include the first three episodes of the game as released in Japan with fully localized text and voice acting in English, plus additional quality of life improvements and balance changes from the current versions of the Japanese game. This beta is still only on Xbox One, so if you're on PC only, you're still going to have to wait your turn to roll around. Usually it's the other way around in these types of games. Oh well. I mean, we've waited this long. Why not wait a little more? And another open beta coming up is for the free-to-play MMORTS Starborn. It's scheduled to start on April 2nd. Starborn puts you in charge of your own space station in a 4X-style gameplay with other players. Starborn's been in alpha, but the new beta build will add a new map, new victory conditions, new things to discover, an in-game tutorial, and much more. It's all free, so check out the link below to find out more, and of course, sign up if you're interested. And not to be left out, Last Oasis has also announced its early access will begin on March 26th on Steam. This woodpunk survival MMO looks pretty promising so far. The team behind the game, Donkey Crew, the epic name, has also promised that they are planning new PvE and PvP content, new biomes, new features, and much more in 2020. Might be worth wishlisting on Steam in order to keep up with the updates. Moving on, Legends of Aria has announced its first DLC, Dark Sorcery, set to launch later this month with a price of $19.99. This new expansion continues the game's story with a new dungeon, the Monolith, which features a new race of enemies that have been contained and twisted within. Two new sorcery skills and, of course, new loot will also be added. Citadel Studios has also hinted that they will soon reveal their plans to leave early access. I guess that means that they're happy with the current state of the game. 
On another note, Planetside 2 has finally released a major update after a super long period of silence. Called Escalation, the update introduces a new guild-based in-game tournament called the Outfit Wars. These take place monthly, and outfits can qualify in the new Desolation Asteroid map. There's also a new War Assets system for outfits, a new Cross Empire Social Zone, and a new vehicle, the Bastion Fleet Carrier, which includes manable turrets, artillery cannons, mobile vehicle respawn points, and more. In other news, Paladins has launched its Sands of Myth update last week. A key part of this update is the visual rework of the popular map Frog Isle, making it a lot more, you know, froggy. There's also new death cards to taunt your defeated enemies, and a new commendation system to encourage good player behavior in matches. Guess they got that idea from Smite. There's also a new Egyptian-themed battle pass, including skins for Tiberius, Rom, Ying, and Maeve. Mentioned last week, Terra has went forward and launched a new update on PC this week called Kaya's Anvil. This update introduces two new dungeons, the Corrupted Sky Nest and the Forbidden Arena, both five-player dungeons. There's also a new tier of mythic gear to collect, and to aid players, Inmass has increased the daily cap on adventure coins used to access the dungeons. There's also a special event going on until April 7th where you can earn Darken's Verdant Wings for completing 28 dungeons. All the details are in the link below. Inmass also launched an update for its arcade brawler Closers this past week, introducing players to the new arena of Busan where players can go and investigate a new incursion of dimensional monsters. There is of course some new costumes to collect, special Busan packages on discount, and an ongoing event where you can earn extra rewards as you check out the new content. Destiny 2's Season of the Worthy update has also gone live this past week. We've hyped this one up last week too, but uh, you know, a quick recap. This update has introduced Rasputin challenges, Seraph Tower public events, new seasonal rewards, and most importantly, the return of the Trials of Osiris competitive weekend tournaments once held in the original Destiny. I think a lot of players are going to really like that coming back. Meanwhile, the European destroyers are starting to sail out in World of Warships with update 0.9.2. This introduces the early access period for European destroyers in Tier 5 and up. These ships feature long-range torpedoes, good anti-aircraft defense, and a repair party function. The other highlight is a major balance change to the HE Shell skill, nerfing it some to try to balance it with other skills. There's new cosmetics and more, so make sure you check out the full details linked below if you're interested. Finally, while I know everyone's trying to keep coronavirus off their mind, it's important to note that this week, E3 announced that it will be cancelled because of the virus and offering full refunds to those who have already paid for tickets or exhibition space in advance. E3 was already looking pretty grim this year with Sony having already pulled out again, so, you know, it isn't entirely a surprise. It's not the first game expo to be canceled either. GDC has also been postponed, and of course we don't have South by Southwest. Looks like it's going to be a rough year for everyone, including gamers. Hopefully we'll see some companies host a digital showcase for what we would have seen at E3. Not sure. Well, I guess we'll see how it goes. Either way, that's about it for all the major news and announcements for this week. For more information on the news topics, check the links in the description below. Feel free to discuss the news or even more news in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that little bell icon to get notifications, and of course, share this video. But until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.